السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين just a few words inshallah ta'ala and then we'll pray it for a week inshallah ta'ala um, just uh, being in prayer and uh, being filled with incredible gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for being in the masjid um, the masajid are the most beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be with uh, the company of the righteous, many of my teachers, many of my beloved ones. Uh, this is a tremendous ni'mah. And sometimes we, uh, we don't stop and think about these, these ni'am. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that if you were to even try to enumerate uh, the, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do so. And above that, I mean, we're listening to the beautiful recitation of Qari Amar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, the story of Musa alayhi salam. And it reminded me of something I read in a book called The Lives of Man by Imam uh, Abdullah bin Ali wal Haddad, rahimahullah ta'ala, in which he said that, he said, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he once came to a group of Sahaba. And he said to them, "Mada taquluna fi hadhi al-aya? What do you say about this ayah? Wa ma kunta bi jani bi turi idna dina? That you were not at the side of Mount Sinai when we called out." And the Sahaba said, "Allah wa Rasuluhu alam. Allah and His Messenger know best." And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "This was when Allah subhanahu wa taala he revealed the alwah, the the tablets." to Musa alayhi salam, and he described the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the alwah. And Musa alayhi salam was so absolutely mesmerized by what he was reading that he requested to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, make this my ummah. Make the ummah of Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, No, your ummah is Bani Israel. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to describe the virtues of this ummah in the, the uh, scripture of Ahl al-Kitab. And there are many, many descriptions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this day in their books. And Musa alayhi salam, he was so smitten by what he was reading. And at one point, according to the hadith, Musa alayhi salam said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, make me a man of that ummah, just a, just a believer, a Muslim in the ummah of Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Musa alayhi salam wanted to become just one of us. We were the envy, good envy. This is a good envy. We were the envy of prophets. This is the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, he said, no, your ummah is Bani Israel, but you can hear their voice if you wish. You can hear the voice of this great ummah. And Musa alayhi salam, he said, I, would, I wish to hear their voice. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ummah ta Ahmada, O ummah of Ahmad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In all of us, all of us, we said, La bayk, Ya Rabb, La bayk, at your service. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Praise me. And we said, Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, give me praise. And we said, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. And Musa alayhi salam heard our praise, heard our tasbih and our tahmeed and our tahleed. He heard us say, subhanallah, wa, wa alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, this is the meaning. Wa ma kunta bi janibi turi idna dayna. That you were not at the side of Sinai. When we called out, when we called out to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and Musa alayhi salam heard our voice. This is a tremendous ni'mah. We have to think about these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in this beautiful virtue. It's called a theological virtue. Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala, he enumerates 19 theological virtues. And towards the top of the list is shukr, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the epitome of the akhlaq nabawiyah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he was praying all night long and his feet were swollen red or his heels were cracking and his beloved wife, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, why do you do this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven your past and future transgressions and the transgression of a prophet is completely different than our transgression. A transgression of a prophet is leaving an act of great virtue for an act of lesser virtue, but he's always virtuous. 
What was his response? Shall I not be a grateful servant? He was Shakura, which is different than the Shakir. The Shakir is the one who praises Allah in times of prosperity. But the Shakur is the one who continues to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether in prosperity or in, in times of deprivation. He praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows, he has the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if someone is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and he doesn't get it, the wise person knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, inshallah, he is, he is, he is uh, taking something uh, possibly dangerous or harmful away from me. I don't deserve this thing. It's not good for me. And he continues to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This takes spiritual maturity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in, in shukr to him.